Praise the Lord, household of faith, to all our YouTube listeners and friends. We thank God for allowing us to see the last Sunday of the month of January. It's January the 31st, and being the last, the fifth Sunday, it is Brotherhood Day. And we thank God for Deacon Sean Williams and Deacon Latrell Kirk. These are our leaders for the Brotherhood. We praise God for what they have been doing in the time past for the Brotherhood. And we thank God for what God is doing for us here in the house of God to be able to come to you in the YouTube platform. This morning, Brotherhood Service, I want us to not just be spectators. Now, I don't want us to be one that just said I was able to listen to the YouTube message uh, that Elder Allen uploaded. But I want us to be participators. I want us to be involved with this message that we're going to listen to. We're going to listen to the late Bishop Paul Alexander Bowers. And this is a very inspirational message. And if you're watching it on your phone in the break, you're going to have to watch this again because I want you to participate. I want you to be stirred up by this message. I want you to let God have his way. When, when the Lord moves, you want to shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah. If you want to raise your hand, I want you to raise your hand because this is a message that I want you to leave feeling encouraged and inspired. I want the Holy Ghost to be stirred up in you after this particular message. And his message is grace in the wilderness. And I guarantee you, if you would just give God your mind, your heart, your energy, your ears in this message, you will experience the grace in your wilderness. I'm not going to go no further. I'm going to ask you to tune in, get your children, get your husband, get all those in whom you want affected with your own self, and let's go into it. Somebody need deliverance. God is saying deliverance. It's all right to have a deliverance service. It's okay to have a deliverance service. It's all right. Deliver, Lord. Deliver. 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 Set free. Motion eye.
Just tell somebody, say, I feel like going on. Tell somebody else, say, I feel just like going on. Hallelujah. Through many dangers, towards the snake. I've already come. It's been grace that brought me safe thus far. And it's grace that's going to lead me on. Hallelujah. I still got to pray. Tell somebody, say, I still got to pray.
Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 1. <clears throat> At the same time, saith the Lord, will I be the God of all the families of Israel, and they shall be my people. Thus saith the Lord, the people who were left of the sword found grace in the wilderness, even Israel, when I went to cause him to rest. Also, there is one verse, you need not turn to it, unless you just care to, but it's in the book of Psalms. Book of Psalms, chapter 102, verse number 13. Thou shalt rise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her, yea, the set time is come. The verse that will serve as the text this evening will be from Jeremiah chapter 31, and it is found in that second verse. Thus saith the Lord, the people who were left of the sword found grace in the wilderness, even Israel, when I went to cause him to rest. I want to talk to you tonight about grace in the wilderness. Grace in the wilderness. Jeremiah has been labeled by Bible scholars and theologians as a prophet, one of the major prophets. And I don't know just what criteria they use to arrive at the decision that one prophet is major and one is minor. But he has been, along with Isaiah and Ezekiel, he's labeled as one of the major prophets. Jeremiah is also called the weeping prophet, the man who whose eyes was filled with tears as he observed the weakness and as he observed the failure of the people of God. It is Jeremiah that said, oh, that mine eyes were a fountain of tears that I may weep day and night for the health of the daughter of my people. Jeremiah, if you recall, was the one that when God commissioned him and God called him, he began to tell God his weaknesses, his shortcomings, wanted the Lord to know how old he was or how young. The Lord said to him, and he says in principle the same thing to us today, I know all about you. I know what I'm doing, even if you don't. He said to Jeremiah, don't tell me how old you are, I already know that. I know you're a child, I know your past, I know your present, and I, I also know your future. 
God makes a selection of the people or the persons that he wishes to use. Sometimes it's good to feel inadequate. There are those that feel that I'm all of that and I'm all of this and a bag of chips as well. I am this, this, don't think this church cannot succeed and survive without you. Don't think it evolves around you. Don't, don't think because you've been here longer than most folks. It is the church is built upon Jesus Christ and not on you. Some people come into the church. I think this is perhaps more so true today than ever before, and this is not necessarily criticism. But I do talk to some ministers who feel like we are old fashioned. We need to change some things. Some people come in the church and you want to rearrange the furniture. You just got here. We've been here suffering and crying and praying and pressing. You just arrived on the scene and you got all the answers. But you got to stay around here and cry a little bit suffer. Praise the Lord. Jeremiah felt his inadequacy to carry the word of the Lord. And I guess there are others perhaps, and I'm thinking even about Moses, when the Lord called him and sent him down to deliver the message of liberation to the people that were in bondage in Egypt. His response to the Lord was, Lord, they gonna wanna know who sent me down here. I know protocol, I lived in the house of Pharaoh and I know just anybody's not gonna get in to see him. When I get down there, who, who, what will I tell them? Who, who, who will I say sent me? The Lord said to Moses, tell them that I am that I am. Jeremiah, uh, Moses, since you've been complaining about your inadequacy, your shortcomings, your stammering lips, your tired tongue, and uh, but the Lord was telling Moses that Moses, whatever you don't have, that's what I am. I am whatever you are not. I can do what you cannot do. I can go where you can't go. That's, that's, that's the kind of God we serve here tonight. So whatever your inadequacy may be tonight, as you are sitting here in the church, you may be afraid, perhaps. But just know that God has all the bases covered. Thank God. He had everything fixed when you arrived on the scene. Don't think for one moment God is out trying to concoct an escape for your dilemma. God had the way of escape prepared before you got into the trouble and in the problem. The Bible says God declares the end from the beginning. You and I, we start at the beginning and work toward the end. God starts at the end and works back 
to the beginning. And then when he finishes, he tells us, all right, go ahead. Now I've taken care of everything. Praise the Lord. So this man was called of God to go on a mission. And he was anointed and inspired by the Lord and proceeded to deliver the message that God laid upon his heart. The greatest thing the world needs today is a God sent preacher. We got too many politicians. We got too many crooked preachers. We need some good preachers. Called of God that believes in holiness and sanctification. We need preachers you can trust with your daughters and your wives and even your sons. Can I get amen on that today? Faith comes by hearing. Hearing by the word of the Lord. How can they hear? Without a preacher, how can he preach except he be sent? So it is today, dear saints of God, as we observe this great man as he declared the word of God that was impressed by God on his heart. Jeremiah got in trouble. He was imprisoned and placed down in the dungeon. All probability they bound his hands and his feet. Jeremiah said, Lord, I didn't know this was in it. You didn't tell me this when you called me. So I'm through. I'm going to quit. And I'm not going to prophesy another word. But the Bible says his word was in his heart. Like as of a mighty burning fire. Jeremiah could not hold his peace. I want to tell you when you get in the church. And if God really fills you and thrills you with the gift of the Holy Ghost. Honey, you ain't gonna give up easy. You ain't gonna do it. If God has saturated your heart from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet with his spirit and power, the least little ripple, the least little bump in the road, it ain't gonna cause you to quit and surrender. If you've got it deep down in your heart, you will press toward the mark for the high calling of the Lord. You ain't going to quit and walk out on the Lord simply because somebody mistreated you, overlooked you. You heard somebody say something about you. Who told you you were too good to be talked about anyhow? Where'd you get that from? Amen. But if you, if you know the Lord like you are supposed to know him, like you can know him, you will not surrender at the first conflict. You will not turn your back on God and walk out of here. And let me add something else to that. You're not going to let no half-saved saint drive you out of here either. Not so. Praise the Lord. Some people want it to be comfortable for me to serve the Lord. They want the seat dusted off. They want the fan handed them. They want to be made to feel like a celebrity. But I'm here to tell you, honey, you're going to pay for what you get. 
You can get in here for nothing, but if you stay here, it's going to cost you everything you got. Praise the Lord. And so it is. Saints of God, the Lord provides the things that we need. And so the prophet speaks to Israel and he wants them to know. And you see, God is a God that knows he's always got to help his folks. He, know, he understands what it is about. He knows it's not a one night stand dealing with his folks. God knew he'd have to put up with you day after day after day. He knew he'd have to forgive you when he got you. He knew he would have to renew you, come by and revive you. He knew he'd have to restore you. Praise the Lord, all of this is necessary in serving the Lord. Thank God I'm not here because I've been so strong. I'm not here tonight because I have been so fervent or so determined. But I'm here because the Lord, praise the Lord, has been mighty understanding of me. I'm here because he has forgiven me. Somebody said he's blessing me over and over. And sometimes I think we maybe need to change that song. See, the Lord is forgiving me. The Lord is helping me over and over and over. The very fact that you're here tonight with, with, with your inspiration, I don't care how high it is or how low, but by virtue of the fact that you're sitting here, the Lord has been interceding and intervening for you. Don't you know the devil would have had you out of here a long time ago? In fact, if it had been left up to him, you would have never gotten in here. Thank God, but here we are, sitting in the house of God. I'm glad the doors are not locked. That's not why I'm in here. It's not because the windows have been bolted and bars put across the windows and doors, but the reason I'm still here tonight is because I'm enjoying Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. There is something. There is something advantageous in serving the Lord. Yeah. No, there's nobody in the world like the saints of God Almighty. There's no people on the face of this earth like God's spirit bought people, blood sought, blood bought, blood covered. Folks, thank God that God has picked up out of the trash heap and made us a new creature. Oh, I haven't been recycled tonight. But I've been made a new creature. If any man is in Christ, he is a new creature. Praise the Lord. And somebody said, I'm just a sinner. Say by grace, not so. I was a sinner, but I ain't no sinner tonight. Amen. I'm saved and sanctified. Holy Ghost filled and fire baptized. Clap your hands and say hallelujah tonight. Thank God, and so as we observe these people and observe this prophet as he prophesies and speaks to the children of God, he says to them, if you look through this chapter and other verses and chapters akin to it, amen, Jeremiah wants the people to know how they came through the wilderness. He wants them to know who it was that watched over them who it was that plucked them up and then broke them down and, and who it was that brought them back together and stood them on their feet again. He wanted them to know that you have come through the wilderness, but you've got here, you've made it through because of the grace of the Almighty God. Thank God, he said, the Lord said, I will build thee and thou shalt be built, O virgin, of Israel, thou shalt again be adorned with thy timbrels, and thou shalt go forth in the dances of those who make merry. I just come by to tell you this evening the saints of God are not supposed to be in the valley 24-7. You're not, you're not required nor even expected to stay in the valley day after day after day. 
Not only that, but I also believe that the saints of God, there are times we have sicknesses in our body, but I firmly believe we have the right, praise the Lord, to go to our God and claim our healing in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God has promised us certain benefits and certain uh, favors as a result of being his child. And don't let the enemy make you feel that you're always supposed to be in the valley of despair with no song, no joy, no peace, no victory. But I just come to tell you this evening that God has a favor upon you. He, he, he gives you favor. He gives you kindness. God is not going to stand back and watch the devil beat up on you day after day after day. But God wants you to know I am your God. I am your Savior. I am your Lord. And I'm going to take care of you and bring you out more than conqueror let the church say amen today oh yes I believe saints of God the devil has sown some seeds of propaganda among the saints of the almighty thank God but God it's his, it's his, his grace amen that brought us through the wilderness amen and I don't I don't know how long you've been saved or how long you've been here but there's one thing I do know if you stay here any time at all there's something you're going to have to endure there's something you're going to have to overcome there's something you're gonna have to conquer but say child of God if there's never was a battle if there was never a war if there was never a conflict then we couldn't really have a celebration but oh simply because we've been in the fight we've been in the battle we've been in the valley we've been on the sick bed and God has delivered us and liberated us and tonight it's it's time to celebrate God's deliverance. Glory to God. Oh yes. Oh yes. Oh yes. Oh yes. Thank God. Oh, and I, and I want you to know when we look back and observe the where we have come from and the things that we've encountered this evening, when we observe the things that God has done for us, when we see how God has made ways for the saints of the Almighty God, when we see His handiwork, when we see God making a way where there seemed to be no way, when we see God interceding for us us and in a beating for us amen it shouldn't be a difficult time for the saints of God to express their deep appreciation to the God of their salvation and even tonight as you sit here how do you know how many demons God has had to beat off of you today how do you know how many devils has tried to trap you amen and tried to deceive you tried to turn you around but look at us tonight. Uh, Satan came up empty handed. Uh, Satan tried to stop us uh, but still we are here giving God the glory thanking him, honoring him. Clap your hands and say hallelujah today. Amen. And I, I want you to know uh, it's all because God favors us. Uh, we are God's favorite children. Uh, I know God has created everything, everybody. Uh, amen. God created man. Uh, amen. Both male and female. Uh, amen. But there's some of that creation uh, that God has recreated. Uh, amen. And made new creatures uh, in Christ Jesus. Uh, and God is tender hearted uh, as he considers his children and looks upon his people a God has a tender heart when he sees our struggle amen how can a just God and a loving and a kind a God stand back and watch his children be maligned amen over and over again how what kind of God would he be if he would stand back and let the devil shake you from stem to stern what kind of God would he be if he'd 
see the devil steamrolling over you and not do nothing about it. But I want you to know we've got a God that is, hallelujah, that is compassionate. We've got a God this evening that's concerned about us. We've got a God that didn't, that not only did he save us, but God said, I am a jealous God. Amen. I'm concerned about you. And when God says he's jealous, it doesn't mean like some men who come home early to see what they find. That's not being jealous. That's being a fool. Hallelujah. You ought to find something. But when jealousy is in order, it means I want to take care of you. I don't want you going nowhere else. If you're weak, lean on me. If you're tired, lean on me. If you're hungry, I'll feed you. Amen. I'm a jealous God. I don't want you going, hallelujah, nowhere else. And that's the way God is. And if we could just have, amen, a testimony service here tonight, you would be amazed if this congregation and the saints that are here would just stand up one by one. I'm not asking you to do it right now, but you'd be amazed to hear the saints of God, amen, in this church testify uh, to what God has done for them. Uh, you would be surprised uh, to know what God uh, has brought us out of. Uh, you would be amazed uh, to learn how many uh, have had their bodies healed. Uh, you would be shocked uh, to know how God uh, has reached down in the depths uh, and brought us up and set us uh, up on a high. Yes, we've been tried. Uh, yes, we've been tested. Uh, yes, we've been persecuted but I still feel like pressing my way I still feel like serving God here today amen hallelujah and so it was the Lord that brought you through the wilderness how did you feel when you come out of the wilderness I felt like shouting when I come out of the wilderness amen it was said one time as a man who was an agnostic and looked at the chains of God and began to point out all of the things they go through and it was saying the truth it was saying the same in the case of Job when his friends ridiculed him and said you've had to do wrong look at what you're going through man what kind of God is that that you're serving you've lost your health you've lost your wealth you've lost your cattle and you're still praising God you've lost your stocks you've lost your bonds and you're still praising God what kind of man are you what kind of God that are you serving that stripped you from everything and you have boils from the top of your head to the sole of your feet but I want you to know I'll tell you what kind of God he is he lets trouble come but he'll stop it when he gets ready he'll let trials come but he'll stop it when he gets ready he'll let sickness come but he'll stop it when he gets ready ah hallelujah God is in charge of the affairs of men and then when God brings us out all he wants us to do is just pause and give him some honor and give him some glory amen but while the agnostic looks on and says what kind of God it stands back and let his people suffer like they suffer but I'll tell the agnostic he needs to look just a little closer yes I'm in the fire yes I'm in trouble but trouble is not troubling me yes I'm in the fire but I'm like the bush that Moses saw it was on fire but could not be consumed it's God that keeps my mind and my soul together it's God he said I'll keep you in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on the Lord clap your hand and say hallelujah today 
Hallelujah. And so God, uh, he's favoring us. Uh, God looks at us uh, and he's kind to us. Uh, God observes us uh, and he's happy we are here. God's not sorry that he brought us in here. And let me tell you, child of God, uh, God is not disappointed uh, over his saints. He's not disappointed uh, when we fail him. It doesn't disappoint God. It just gives God uh, another opportunity uh, to show you uh, the kind of God he is. God wants to be God in your life. I say God wants to be God in your life. He's not disappointed if some fail and walk away from the church. God ain't disappointed if some camouflage a man and sugar coat and take down on the word of God. God is not disappointed because he knows that I went to Calvary and when it's all over I'm going to have me a people that's going to serve me. Somebody is going to serve me. Somebody is going to preach my word. Somebody is going to hold the bloodstained manner of the Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody is going to say Jesus is the best thing that ever happened to me. Somebody is going to cry loud. They're going to spare not. Show my people their transgression. Somebody is going to weather the storm. I wonder tonight, is there anybody in here that's in a storm? The winds are blowing. The waves are dashing high. The ship is being tossed in the waves. But say, I got a man on board. I've got a man who is able to calm the wind. I've got a man who can set this ship upright. Let hell come. Let the devil howl. Let demons scream. Somebody is going to press their way. Somebody is going to hold on to God. And saints, I want you to know uh, from where I stand, it's about time some of us gave God uh, some real glory. It's about time. Haven't you cried long enough? Haven't you been in the valley long enough? Haven't you been quiet long enough? Haven't you been, hallelujah, in a state of indecision long enough? Yes, you cry. Yes, you have trouble. But every now and then, the saints of God give glory to God Almighty. Every now and then, you need to go forth in the praise. Go forth in the shout. Go forth in the dance. Go forth. Every now and then you need to come alive. This is the Holy Ghost dispensation. Every now and then you need to let go and let God. Oh, you see, saints, you never know when the enemy is checking out the church, checking out the saints, checking out the people of God to see if there's anybody sitting in here yawning or scratching their head. If there's any Anybody in here looking in their purse with their mirror straightening out their face he's looking around to see if anybody in here is losing their desire well I don't want Satan to think I'm changing my mind so every now and then I've got to raise my hand every now and then and say I am still on the Lord's side ah. 
hallelujah clap your hand and say hallelujah I don't want to sit here and be a wallflower but I want to go forth in the dance in the praise in the running in the clapping because I am one of them I know him in the power of his resurrection in the fellowship of his suffering I know hallelujah hallelujah let me say this to you saints amen the best thing that the church of God needs in this day greater than anything else is more people who will be willing to praise God though the greatest thing we can do for God is to advertise him is to praise him is to sing until the power of the Lord comes down if you want healing praise God if you want deliverance praise God let's have church let's have church let's have church let's have church 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 glory hallelujah for you see God has brought you out of something he has delivered you from something and you ought to act like you've been delivered how long has it been since you went forth in the holy dance how long has it been since you felt the fire of God burning down in your soul how long has it been since God shook you hallelujah how long oh. hallelujah how long has it been that you've spoken in the unknown tongue as the spirit of God gave you utterance how long hallelujah has it been that the Holy Ghost got in your hand how long has it been till it ran down your spinal cord got in your corpuscles in your bloodstream in your nervous system in your arteries how long oh lord how long has it been since you really felt the vibration of the Holy Ghost and I want to tell you some of you in here tonight may be looking at the door changing your mind gonna walk out of here but let me tell you honey before you walk out why don't you just pause and try out a few hallelujahs before you go out of here why don't you stay a little longer and try a few glory try a few thank you Jesus try glory 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 to God try out a few that's what got you started hallelujah Thank you, Jesus. When the brother took me home last night and picked me up tonight, I said something last night. It never really occurred to me, and yet, yet I guess it did. When it, the brother picked me up and said, "Bishop, I'm here to pick you up," he said, "But I'm still saying glory because that is my destination. Glory is the object." of my struggle glory is the goal I'm trying to win glory hallelujah 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 I said hallelujah I said hallelujah hallelujah 
let me tell you saints there's enough power in here tonight to drive the devil out of here there's enough holy ghost in here tonight to put the devil on the run there's enough spirit in this place to drive Satan out of here whatever 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 you need there's enough power in here tonight glory 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 I said glory all we need to do is get in one mind and in one accord if there's any devil lurking in here if he's up under the piano or in the seat or back in the corner or in the restroom or out in the parking lot there's enough spirit and power among the saints of God maybe I'm wrong about it maybe I need to find out is there any power in the house maybe I need to check out just to see is there is there any power any power any power how how any power in the house any power any power in the choir any power in the choir any power preachers the holy ghost is power 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 we are holy ghost folks get out of here this is god's house get out get out get out of here this is god's house i said this is god's house god's working in here somebody's here wants to be delivered tonight somebody's here wants to be healed tonight somebody's here that needs a touch in the midst of confusion God can work in the midst of division and conflict I know I didn't preach my text tonight but maybe I'll preach tomorrow night but right now I just want to tell you we are people of power oh yeah oh yeah hallelujah am I right over here Glory. am I right in here Am I right? Am I right? Am I right? Power! Of God. Spirit! Ooh. Ooh. Takes the power of God to deliver you this evening. God bless you. God help you. Let's utilize our power. Let's stretch out on it. On this Holy Ghost. There's power! In the name of Jesus, Jesus can put the devil on the flight. Jesus is a name that's above every other name. Every knee gotta bow before him. Every eye shall see him. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus.
hallelujah somebody just holler Jesus what's the name above every name what's the name above every name God's saving name is Jesus hallelujah hallelujah we lay hands on the sick in the name of Jesus we cast out devils in the name of we bless our food in the name of and we baptize in the name of what's God's saving name what's his name glory to God hallelujah Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Glory to God! The man of God said we're not a weak people. We're not a bent over people. We stand upright. Some trust in horses. Some trust in chariots. But we will remember the name of the Lord our God we are the people of the name not just an ordinary man his name is Jesus that name which is above every name hallelujah the man of God has preached the word of the Lord tonight anybody that is not wearing that name you can be buried with him by baptism in the name of Jesus if you would repent of your sins you're willing to turn from your wicked ways he's ready and able the man of God keeps saying it he said it last night and he said it tonight for your salvation the Lord has already taken care of it what more can Jesus do He's laid the foundation. Let's open up the way. It's time for you to respond to the call. It's time for you to say yes to the will of God for your life. I don't care how bad you think your life is. Jesus can handle it. I don't care what kind of background you come from. Jesus can take care of it. There's nothing too hard for him. Oh, I, is there anything too hard for God? There is nothing. Tonight, you can be a recipient of the grace of God. Today, you can go down in water in Jesus' name for the remission of your sins. Hiya. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. This sounds like an apostolic church. Hallelujah. Today, all you got to do is get up out that pew, walk down that aisle. Said, I'm ready to get right with God. I'm ready to say yes to God. I'm ready to get right with backslider. Come home. Come home. Anybody that hasn't been down in the water in the name of Jesus. Tonight is the opportunity for you to get your conscience clear. To get your sins washed away it's not an option you must be born again of water and spirit something about something about that name everybody call the name say Jesus Jesus let it ring out, Jesus, oh Jesus, there is something, something about that name. What is he to you? He's my master. He's my savior. Somebody call that name again.
like the fragrance after the rain Come on, apostolic people, shout it again, Jesus. That name, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Let all heaven and earth proclaim. Somebody testify, say kings and kingdoms. They'll all pass away. But there's something But there's something 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 about there is something something about something about there's something Oh, somebody praise the name of Jesus. Somebody praise the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Glory to Jesus. My God. You will never be able to say, I didn't have an opportunity. You'll have to say, they gave me an opportunity and I turned it down. That name which is above every name. Something about that name. Father, I thank you for the word that we heard tonight. We thank you for the souls that responded. We pray and ask that this word would go home with us. Father, let us meditate upon the word of the Lord. Father, I pray that the word would build us up. Father, I pray that we would be strengthened in our faith. Have your way in this place. Don't let us just be hearers, but let us be doers of the word. In Jesus' name. Somebody give the Lord a praise for the word tonight.